Hey beautiful people, welcome to episode 112 of Credit 101. In this episode, I want to talk to you guys about voiding pawn shops. If you guys are borrowing money from pawn shops, you really need to stop, especially depending on, uh, it's not depending on, especially knowing that you guys are being charged a lot of money. You guys can be charged up to 240%. Um, and this is going to just be a lot of money and this amount is based off of the current laws or wherever you're at on how much they can charge sometimes they retri- restrict how much they can actually um charge you guys in interest but you'll see you'll take maybe some jewelry up there um maybe you'll take like a tv or something up there and they'll say hey just leave that here and we'll give you this money usually it's only about 150 dollars or sometimes a little bit more a little bit less and that sometimes even more depending on what you're doing sometimes with your jewelry, it could be a lot of money. But people go out there and take their stuff up there. And as soon as you don't pay it, you default on it. Whatever you left there, whatever you left there is now the pawn shops. And this is how the pawn shop have a lot of things there. And the pawn shop usually would give you about 20 to 50% of whatever your item is worth. It's, it's really depending on where you go. They may give you more, they may give you less. But if you default on it, you might have to leave that item there. Now, I can understand. I can understand if you like, I, I couldn't sell this thing and I need to get rid of it. But you got to think about it. They're not giving you a true value of what that thing is worth, too, if you go to the pawn shop. So please do not do this. I found out somebody was doing this and it's just, it's just like, why? It's, it's not worth it. You know what I mean? It's just not worth it. So please try not to do this. Please avoid this. If you need to have uh, any additional money, don't do this to pay off debt. This, this, this is not it. Like, I already have whatever debt that you have, depending on whatever that debt is, then to go to a pawn shop to try to get money to pay off that debt. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next episode of more things that we need to avoid. Hey, welcome to episode 113 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about basically doing a title loan. You're getting a title loan on your car. Taking out a lien on your car to pay off debt. I do not suggest this at all. Usually when you guys are taking out um, loans and stuff on your car to pay off your debt, when you go into these smaller places, this is not um, maybe a credit union. We're not talking about those different things. When you go into a smaller places, that's probably doing payday loans and they do title loans up there. They're charging a lot of money. Sometimes they charge 25% a month. And yeah, think about it. That's 300% a year. Okay. That's a lot of money that you guys are going to spend. So imagine if you borrow $500, you're going to have to pay $125 in interest. And then on top of that, you guys still have to pay that $500 and plus any other additional fees that they're going to charge you. Now I did do a title loan, but I think I was like 18. And let me tell you why. Um, I got a tax refund. I ended up buying me a new Bitcoin cash. Um, somebody was supposed to buy this vehicle from me. I think I paid like five hundred dollars for it, and I drove it for the. No, I paid fifteen hundred dollars for it, and I drove it for a whole year. Um, the car had problems, but they still gave me a, a, a loan out on it. It was a payday loan, and I understood that I wasn't going to be able to possibly sell this thing. So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead. So I sold the buy it. They didn't buy it. I said, let me go ahead and just put. Uh, a loan out on it. My friend who I still talk to today worked at a place. She kind of told me like um, how it was. I know she probably didn't expect me to actually do it, but once I got my new vehicle, I did not care about this vehicle and I need to get it out of my name anyway. So I went and just did that and I understood the repercussions of it. Like, okay, you're going to come get the vehicle. But my thing was the, what you're giving me a loan amount for is the same thing that she's supposed to pay for it. <laughs> so, you know, the person I was supposed to purchase it. So I went ahead and did it, but I would never do that on my vehicle now. Like, girl, bye. I would never do that now. I was so young. I couldn't technically, um, the person ended up not buying anyway. Um, the person just kept driving around in it. So I was like, you know, let me just take a loan out on it. Like, come get it out the driveway anyway. I need to come get it. One day they actually ended up coming to get it, which was really, really good. So, yeah, that's my story about it. But I would not suggest that now. I remember when they started stopping um, being able to do these type of title loans because it was getting out of, out of hand, especially from where I was from, this is what people normally did. I did to really get rid of the vehicle, but it's not a good thing, especially when you have to pay this money back because you want to keep your vehicle. 
that's a lot of money that you guys are going to be paying out whether you go another option or just be without honestly because when you do some of these things i'm telling you guys to avoid you're actually setting yourself back and i don't want you guys to be setting yourself back so please avoid this if you can it's going to be very very helpful if you can and yeah if you guys have any questions definitely let me know i'll see you guys in the next video hey beautiful people welcome to episode 114 of credit 101 in this episode i want to talk to you guys about peer-to-peer -peer lending and how you guys need to avoid it and why you guys need to avoid it now usually if you guys look on like prosper or lending club you guys will see some peer-to-peer -peer lending there is where you can possibly borrow some money sometimes people may borrow 10 20 30 40 thousand dollars from these different platforms and other platforms that's out there now the thing is i do not think a lot of people should borrow from these different places because the interest rate may be very very high usually if you got a very good credit score you'll be able to do some lending and you'll be able to get a very decent credit score but then it depends too on what's the overall rates out there at that time too but you could possibly get some decent um you can probably get like a decent interest rate but when you guys do these things they have an original origination fee where maybe one to eight percent so whatever you get you have to pay that as a fee up front is what you're going to have to pay and then also you have to think about the interest rate that they're going to charge you you guys are going to get like a very high interest rate as if you have a credit card and i just don't want that for you all so before you think about doing like peer-to-peer -peer lending please look at any type of fees origination fees they're going to give you or upfront fees that you have to pay or it's just a fee for doing business the point that you're borrowing this money for um from me is forty thousand dollars i want to charge you a fee so you want to figure out what that fee is, plus you want to figure out what your interest rate is going to be. And is there any type of penalties for paying late because all that add up or any other fees that they can have out there. So definitely look into that. And is it something I think that you guys should definitely avoid? And if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, welcome to episode 115 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're definitely going to talk about how you guys should avoid those easy solutions. Sometimes you guys may see a lot of TV offers that may say, hey, we can help you with your debt. And they're gonna say that they can help you pay less for certain debts, but you guys can do this on your own. All you have to do is call these different companies and actually settle. You can, you can settle with these different companies. And sometimes like collection companies, they do something called pay for deletion where you can actually pay less than what you actually owe on that debt. And once you pay it, they'll delete it from your credit reports, which is amazing. Some companies may say, okay, just pay 60% of what you owe. That's kind of normal too. A lot of collection companies will do that. And you'll go with a company like, oh my gosh, you're knocking the debt off or you know, I'm paying less. But what they're doing is they're charging you a lot of fees. Plus they're getting that discount. On the other end so you're thinking that it's just amazing you're consolidating your debt or you figure something out but in in actuality what they're doing is they're getting all your debts and then they're calling these different companies getting the different settlements and as you're paying them they're selling these different companies and pocketing the rest and that's just being honest also some of them may say that they can help you with your bankruptcy but they're not a licensed bankruptcy attorney so they can't technically file bankruptcy for you. Um, they probably help you prepare papers and things like that. So you definitely want to talk to an actual licensed bankruptcy attorney if this is what you really need. Because if you need bankruptcy relief, you want to talk to the right person so that you actually get the relief that you need. So definitely do that. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. But we're kind of over all the things that you can avoid. Now I want to talk about actually settling with these different companies. I have a lot of things out there um, that you guys can look into. A lot of free things that you guys can use with selling with these companies, getting them off your credit reports. So we're going to talk about that for the next few episodes, okay? I'll see you guys in the next episodes. If you guys have any questions, go to my website, rakita.com. Once you go there, right at the top, it's just a schedule a call. I'll schedule a call with me. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I'll see you guys in the next video.